So we are on to day eight of our 90 day New Testament challenge. I don't know how you found the first week, but uh, I've enjoyed it. And one of the things I love to do is just read the story of Jesus again and again and again. And it's going to be great reading Matthew, Mark, Luke and John back to back. Partly because we just get to read about Jesus, his life and his death and his resurrection again and again. But also because as we do that, we'll see the ways that they emphasize different aspects of Jesus's character. A bit like four different artists painting a portrait of the same person. They would all naturally bring out different aspects of that person's character or personality. And so what is Matthew bringing out about Jesus? A few things. Uh, one is the way that Jesus begins his ministry. He says, the kingdom of heaven has come near, or the kingdom of heaven is among you. And one theme that Matthew's really keen for us to get is to understand that Jesus is coming to inaugurate the kingdom, but, um, and he's doing so in a radically new way. But actually, as well as that, this is a fulfillment of everything that has gone before. So that's why his gospel begins with a list of Jesus' family history. It's going back to Father Abraham. Um, uh, Matthew's trying to help us to understand that Jesus is coming out of all that you see in the Old Testament. The way that I picture it in my mind is kind of, a little bit like if we were standing on the banks of a river and it was foggy and we were to see a boat coming out and it would just kind of the shadow of it would just slowly emerge from the mist as it becomes clear kind of what it is it's as if we at the opening of the gospel you just see this fog of new testament old testament characters and then jesus christ kind of emerges from them all and uh, the same is true of the old testament scripture and the old testament law so frequently jesus will say i haven't come to abolish the law but to fulfill it, and I'm going to show you what the true meaning of it is. Uh, he also, Matthew frequently says, Jesus does such and such in order to fulfill this particular prophecy. But here's the key point, the kingdom of heaven is among you now. And so Jesus at one point in Matthew chapter 13, he said, you know, the prophets longed to see what your eyes are seeing. They were living in the days of anticipation, but now... Um, the fulfillment has arrived. Here I am. So the kingdom of heaven is near. That's one theme. Second theme is the kingdom of heaven is like. And so Jesus, as he's, as he's doing his ministry, is trying to help us to understand what, what is the kingdom of heaven like. So that's why he tells so many parables. And Matthew loves to include the parables of Jesus. Mark only has four parables in his whole gospel, but Matthew's got them everywhere. And Jesus is always introducing them, or often introducing them, with the phrase, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, or someone who mixes yeast into a, a batch of dough, or the kingdom of heaven is like a guy who throws a net in the sea and pulls out all these fish, or the kingdom of heaven is like a guy who goes and sows good seed in a field, and then someone comes and sows we weeds among it, and the kingdom of heaven is like. And in his life and through his teaching, he's trying to help us to understand the upside-down nature of the kingdom of God. So we expect a king to be born in a palace and Jesus is born in the back end of nowhere. We expect a king to be born into security and Jesus is born into persecution. Within a short period of time, he's a refugee fleeing to Egypt. We expect kings to hang out with the power brokers and the influential and Jesus is hanging out with the fishermen and the tax collectors and the prostitutes. We expect kings to want to be served and Jesus comes to serve. So he's trying to help us see this is what God's kingdom is like. It's upside down. You think it's one thing, but it's this, it's this radically subversive, different, crazy other thing, and it's among you now. And then he's trying to help us to understand, lastly, what it is to, to say yes to the king of heaven and to walk into the kingdom of heaven. And part of that is becoming a servant of the king of heaven, an ambassador for the king of heaven. So, for us to just be mulling over what does it mean that, that the kingdom of heaven is, is in me, but also God wants to advance and build his kingdom through me. And so the Sermon on the Mount is one way that Jesus is trying to help us to understand how we live as part of his kingdom. Um, but really, I think it probably can be summed up in, in how he sums up the Old Testament, everything that's gone before. And he says, you can live it out if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and if you love your neighbor as yourself. The reading that we had yesterday was particularly strong against the Pharisees. He calls them hypocrites and vipers and like whitewashed tombs and lays into them. Um, all of those charges of hypocrisy 
uh, would have been addressed if they had just loved God from their hearts and loved people too. He says in chapter 24 of Matthew that in, in the kind of the last days, wickedness will increase. And there's this, there's this throwaway line, it says, and the love of most will grow cold. And our call as we seek to build God, God's kingdom this week is to be warm hearted. It's the opposite of that. It's to seek in everything that we're doing to say, Lord, I love you. Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Let my words, let my thoughts, let my actions reflect that to those around me.